I'm Brittany, and this is Drew. And for the past five years, we've been traveling the globe by van, from the U.S. to Canada, Europe to Africa, sharing our story and embracing the great unknown, which has now led us to buying one-way flights to Panama, where we've been called to help these guys build the tiny house homestead of their dreams. Tap subscribe and join us in seeing where this unpredictable adventure takes us all. What's up, guys? Welcome back. Where have we been? <laughs> all over the place. Where are we right now? We are in Panama City, Panama. Panama. We finally made it. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. We've had this plan for many moons. That's right. We're getting ready to meet up with Jordan, Kaylee, and Lola of the Nomadic Movement. Oh! <laughs> oh you guys are so tan! Oh my goodness! Caboga! That gave us a nice tan. Dude, I'm so glad you guys are here. They are waiting for us in Boquete, and we're just a short bus ride, or should I say long bus ride, away from meeting them this weekend. And we decided not to drive our van down here. She's actually tucked away at our storage unit back in San Diego, where we left her after returning from Hawaii. And we didn't leave her before uniting Rodney with his new Hawaiian girlfriend. See ya, bud. We're gonna miss ya. Unfortunately, we can't bring you to Panama with us because you are totally glued to the dash. But look what we brought you back from Hawaii. She'll keep you company. Right there. What do you think? <laughs> we hope you don't miss us too much. You keep spirit safe for us. We decided to leave our van behind because we just wanted to get here, start digging in the dirt, and using our hands to help the nomadic movement build the tiny house community that they've been dreaming of. We're really excited about this opportunity and we're ready to get building since we finished building our van last June. Actually, we haven't even met these guys yet. We've been virtual friends and we can't wait to meet them in real life. And by the time you watch this, we will be with them. We get a cheers. 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 The first coffee. The first cheers. coffee. But before we start our Panamanian journey, let's take things back to when we were traveling across Europe and North Africa in our little Ford Transit, AKA the Howlin' Yowler, AKA our honeymoon mobile. And what we're so excited to recap here is a chapter from the beginning of 2018. And that is our Van Life Morocco travels because Eamon and Beck, you guys are about to board the very same ferry that we did from Spain to Morocco. And we can't let you go there without knowing our top five must-do bucket list items. Absolutely, hashtag Morocco. We made it all the way here to the ticket office. We're in Algeciras, Spain, and we're gonna buy our tickets to cross over to Morocco. Los Barrios, we're buying them from Carlos. Let's go get our tickets and get Let's do this, ferry. we're gonna take the ferry tomorrow. <laughs> Morocco. We're 25 coming. hours later after we've been driving all that way over the last like four days. 1,700 miles? Yeah, 1,700 miles, 25 hours. Let's go get our tickets now. When people ask us what our favorite destination was, nine times out of 10, we say Morocco. Absolutely, if I had to sum it up in one word, I would describe Morocco and van life there as mesmerizing. Wow, that's a big Wild hump. Wild camels, look at them. Wild camels. Which brings us to number one, on our list. Yes. Le Sauvage Noble. You have to go there if you're looking to get to the Sahara and do a camel trek, this is the place to go. Absolutely. Yes, Abudella will give you all the guidance you need, set you up with an amazing excursion. Le Sauvage Noble is actually a casbah, so you can stay there, you can eat there. We highly recommend trying their vegetarian couscous tagine. You guys are going to love it. It's so good, it's nice and warm. Let's go. Potatoes and carrots and peas. And I have my pretty cat friend. Hi, beauty. And Drew and I have to say, we ended up going on a camel trek, unfortunately not with these guys. Yes, we found about these guys after we had already set out on our excursion. And so signing up for a camel trek can be a little bit tricky. You can sometimes be, I don't know, not Hooked, hooked up with somebody else's brother who knows somebody in a different town. But and they're really not brothers. And <laughs> nope. No, but this, 
is legit. Le Sauvage Noble is the best of the best, the creme de la creme. We've already sent other friends to them, so we want to make sure you guys are aware about this place. Yeah. We thought about sending you a message with all this, but that's why we're including it in this video. We thought that would be more fun. <laughs> oh, and that brings me to the point that we actually have a blog post about top tips for van life in Morocco. And I think you guys are gonna wanna check that out. We'll go ahead and put a link to it for you below. below. And although this video is called Dear Eamon and Beck, we know that there's some of you out there who may also be curious about what Morocco will have in store for you. So we hope this appeals to all of you guys. And Next on our list. Yeah, number two. Ooh, you gotta go to a local hammam. This is the bathhouse where all the locals go and you'll get a nice clean scrub. A nice clean scrub? More like an <laughs> excruciatingly rough Amazing. sandpaper scrubbing. Yes. <laughs> We bought the combo package, which cost us about $12. And all I can say is Brynia and I went there on Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. The men go in one entrance, the women another. And after about an hour and a half, we both came out spick and span. We rode our bikes home to our van that night, like just beaming, feeling like we were the cleanest we had ever been in our lives. The other thing that you're gonna wanna know is that you're naked for this scrubbing and the person who is scrubbing you, yes, there is a stranger slash local who will be scrubbing you. They will most likely be half naked. Yeah, partly <laughs> naked. <laughs> but that's the joy of the local hammam. So get ready to have some water thrown on you. They get it from the tap and just toss it over your head. It's a good time. It's awesome. Number three, the Azru Tuesday Market. I got a dress. You brought a dress. Hello. Shukran. Shukran. Zina, it's beautiful. Everybody loves it. Look at all those colors and different fabrics all on there. So pretty. The markets in Morocco are captivating. You can find everything from dates to people getting haircuts to people selling goats, cattle getting traded to clothing. Yeah, local knickknacks, carpets. Yes, be sure to get a carpet from there. That's or where three. we live. Yeah. You, you might walk away with three or four. But the Azru market was the most colorful, aromatic, unforgettable, loud, busy, yeah. amazing, and the best priced actually. Yeah. People oh. came from miles away, walking, bringing their carts, driving their vans. It was the place to be. You know what got me all excited? What's that? Thinking about the kilo of dates that cost Ooh. us $3. Yeah. Mm, you guys are gonna be cooking up a storm with these dates. I can't wait to see what recipes you have to share with us. Inspire us so that we can try and make them too. <laughs> with our overpriced dates here. <laughs> so Eamon, number four is for you specifically, but Beck, you will absolutely love this place too. This Ooh. is Dakla, Morocco. Dakla is all the way about 600 miles south of Golmin, which is the bottom of all the towns in Morocco. So you gotta follow it all the way down through the disputed territory of Western Sahara. It'll be a very long desert road that's one lane going all the way to the peninsula, but you don't wanna miss it. Can I hop in and say, Beck, I had been wanting to take kite surfing lessons for a while, but hadn't felt comfortable enough doing it somewhere. And this was the place where I took my first lessons. Yeah, and what's so cool about Dakla is it's a massive bay. It's world-class for kite surfing. And I was riding all over the bay, and I actually had this dog running, chasing me in my kite, who ended up being <laughs> Leona. Leona, which is Joe's, an awesome chick who's sailed on yachts all around the world and knows the wind inside and out, who gave Brittany kite surfing lessons. And she actually is part of a founding member of Kite House Dakla. Yes, and she is the person who runs White Dune Kiting. She is an absolute gem. She came from the UK, has set up camp there, and actually her kite house 
she let us know that if you guys want to go top up your water you're more than welcome to so we're gonna go ahead and put a link to her kite school and the kite house down below too and we're just excited for you to meet our friends who we absolutely adore over there and yeah. wish that we could be with you reuniting with them but you're just gonna have to give them hugs for us top of the top there go check it out joe we miss and love you and we miss your brownies too <laughs> Definitely one of our highlights while we were there. And number five, rounding off our top five must-dos for this Morocco bucket list is getting to know a local. We had been in contact with Mohammed through Instagram yes. and he invited us to his family's house where we enjoyed a meal with him and we went on a hike with him and his sister and we're just met with some of the kindest, most authentic hospitality and generosity that we have ever no. His mom cooked us a home-cooked yeah. meal, showed us how they roll couscous into a ball. We were eating with our hands, yeah. sitting on the floor. She in the even gave room. us some gifts that she'd had for years, and like we couldn't even believe that she'd just give out some of these things to us. And it wasn't about the gifts. It was just about the fact that we got to experience the culture from the best place possible. <laughs> And before we wrap things up, here's an epic little montage of some of our absolute favorite Moroccan moments for you all to enjoy. Moroccan magic! Moroccan magic! Boom. One of the most prettiest prayers. Uh, we just woke up because the call to prayer is going on and we thought it would stop and it was fine at first but just it's like 15 or 20 minutes later it's and been still going, going. On forever there's two different ones going and they're clashing the one was really pretty and then the other one started and now it's just like endless it's still going strong <laughs> Good morning, sleepyhead. Listen to those birds, they're chirping. And the sun is out, we just slid open the door and look at that view. That's eight Benadieu. A camel crossing sign, one of the coolest signs in Morocco. I just took a portrait of it. Beautiful shot, babe. We're on our way to Dakla. <laughs> We're by the town of Tarfea. Go, Rodney, go. Let's find some camels. Drew and I have a Polaroid camera, and we've started giving away Polaroids in Morocco as a gift to some of the locals because they've never seen a photo of themselves. And this is Drew doing it right now. See une photo. Une photo. Pour vous. For you. Cadeau. Oh. Ça va oh, prendre oh, trois oh, minutes. Oui, trois minutes. Oui. I'm pretty sure they're getting the at camera. something. Look at them. Yeah. Wow. Oh. What's its name, babe? Zubida. 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 She's a girl. Never seen that before. Trying to feed the puppies right now. Oh, They're terrified. There. Get, there it. You go. Get it. There you go. Yeah. There you go. He's like, I've never had duck before. There's a bone for you, other one. Whoa, he caught that in the air. Okay. I kind of think we should close the door. <laughs> I'm afraid of that too. <laughs> yeah, better. Better up there's there, little, Mr. Wow, oh, there's a whole bunch of them. Okay, so I was speeding. I was going two over. I was doing 78 when I could do 76, apparently, and be legal. Speed limit was 70. You're allowed to go between 70 and 76. You were going 78, so they've charged us 150 dirhams. Which, which is, is about 15 bucks. Yeah. They're running my ticket right now. You can see them over there. We literally paid on the spot in cash. They're in fancy little uniforms, though. 
they're nice, but very strict on the speed limit here. <laughs> Just doing their job. Tea time? Royal tea time for two. Roses and 15 other magical ingredients. Smells so good. For my Habibi and me. All of our food for the next week here, it'll probably cost us about $4 here at the souk. Okay. Tell me what you have here. I got two local Chef Shillin donuts. Tied together with some grass. Never seen that before. Never. It was two donuts for one dirham. Ten cents for They're making two. them fresh in the oil. It smells so good. So eat one. Let's try one. Ooh. Mm. Is it yummy? It's very good. Drew's first bite of camel. It's called shimmel in French. It's so tender. Oh, <laughs> Les chars sont là, ils attendent. Does it taste like beef? So tender. Wow. Not as tough, more juicy. We finally found the guy with the prickly pears. The prickly pears. Drew tried to pick them off the cactus himself, and then he ended up with pricklies all in his all hands. All in my fingers, and it hurt like heck. So we decided to never do that again, and we finally found them. These are very good. They're like hard little seeds, and then soft. Sweet. Hold it out for me. Guys, we hope this is helpful for your upcoming adventure. Shukran and Inshallah, we Inshallah. wish you all the very best and we're so excited to see what you capture because we did not vlog while we were there. We didn't know how to vlog yet <laughs> and everything was so overwhelming and incredible that we just couldn't help but be nowhere else but in the moment. It was so mesmerizing. It was incredible. Every ride just had people walking on the streets and we went by animals and donkey carts. You'll know what we mean when you're there but just have a wonderful time and happy adventures in 2020. We'll see the rest of you guys in Panama for next week's episode. That's so right. Don't forget to give us a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on notifications so that YouTube doesn't hide us in the other midst of everything else. And if you know somebody who's interested in Morocco, be sure to share this video. See you guys. Ciao. That's about it. Bye. We made it. We made it. <laughs>